watching Shalom TV, celebrating Jewish culture. Funding for Shalom TV has been provided by the following. And by viewers like you. From the Meadowlands in Secaucus, New Jersey, I'm Mark Golub, and this is Kosher Fest 2009, an incredible exhibition of kosher products from all over the world. More than 200 exhibitors are here. It's an extraordinary event. Kashrut is becoming more and more popular world round. There are some 1,250,000 people who keep kosher year round and 3 million Muslims and members of other religions eat kosher products. Kashrut is more than a $12 billion industry. Nearly $3 million of kosher products are sold just in the United States alone and more than $350 million of kosher ingredients are also sold in the United States. Many of the biggest names in Kashrut are here with large booths displaying all of their goods. But the really exciting story here are the dozens of startup companies which are trying to make a go of it in the world of Kashrut. We want to highlight some of them for you and give you a taste of Kosher Fest 2009 here on Shalom TV. I'm standing here with Henry Deutsch and Mark Cohn, who are both from Gabilla. Am I correct that you're the guys who produced the original Coney Island Knish? That's correct. Okay. So what is your business doing these days? Well, we, we moved just from a Knish company to uh, a different types of gourmet products. Uh, we're all over the uh, supermarket chains, uh, stadiums, uh, clubs. Uh, so we really uh, grew from uh, a push cart down Coney Island to all over the United States. That is lovely. What's your own background? Well, uh, I started in the food business 10 years ago. Started working uh, in the supermarket. Then I made my own line of food. I merged with Gabilla uh, about a year ago. Uh, I used to manufacture blintzes and pancakes. And a year ago, I merged with Gabilla, and uh, now we're doing business together. Very lovely. Where were you born? I was born in Argentina. Really? And when did you come to America? 1985. How old were you? I was 13. So you remember Argentina? The truth of the matter is a little bit. I, I grew up in Panama, so I, I remember Panama. Okay. And what was your Jewish life in Panama? Uh, it was great. We had summer all year round, can't complain. Okay, very good. And how long have you been with Gabilla, Mark? I've been with Gabilla for 15 years as a senior sales manager. Where are you from? Originally from Brooklyn and now from Smithtown, New York. Okay. What have you got here? Here, you're, here is the this famous is banana famous. knish. Gabilla's been around since 1921. We're the largest and the oldest manufacturer of potato knishes or potato products. We make handmade knishes, gourmet knishes, fried knishes, fat-free knishes. This is something new. Wait a minute. There's a fat-free knish? Absolutely. 99% fat-free knish. Does it taste good? Everything tastes good from Gabilla's. And this is something that we've come out with brand new for Costco and BJ's. It's a 45-day fresh package, guaranteed 45 days shelf life. So people are watching right now all over America. Where are the type of places we can get Gabilla products? Well, you can get in, in a lot of the supermarkets. We're in uh, Wolbam, ShopRite, Food Towns, Giant Eagles, Stop and Shop. You go to the stadiums, uh, your delis, restaurants, any of the kosher supermarkets all over New York. Basically, in, in most of the places that you're familiar with, whether it's fresh, we have it frozen, we have the boxes. Um, like Mark told you, uh, 
We're in every single deli uh, showcase in the country. But wait, Mark, is it coast to coast? Coast to coast. And just put this down for a minute. Show me what you've got here on your table. Right here is our famous square fried knish, spinach, kasha, a new assortment of blintzes, which are made of cheese, blueberry, cherry. We also do pancakes for Hanukkah. And the flavors are zucchini, sweet potato, and the all-American potato. Gentlemen, I wish you called to only the best. Thank you very much. Gabilla Products here. We have Henry and Mark. Thank you for your time again. We wish You're you the welcome. best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. If there is a star here at Culture Fest 2009, I have the great pleasure of standing with her, Susie Fishbein, who may have done more to explain to the American scene, not only American Jews, but Americans in general, what cooking kosher is like through a series of wonderful cookbooks. This is Susie Fishbein. Thank you for so good to see thank you. Thank you again. for you too. You too. So here you are with Colitin. Colitin. Tell us about it. It's the first ever kosher bovine gelatin. There's been kosher gelatins on the market before, but they really didn't have the holding power or the body that you need when you're working with gelatin for dessert. The beauty of this, that it comes from bovine skins, is that it really has, turn it upside down. You can't. Oh my. <laughs> so it really is this good? Is that good, Susie? It's fabulous. <laughs> so imagine the body it'll give to your puddings, to your no-bake cheesecakes, to your chocolate silk pies, to one of my favorite desserts, which they're actually launching on the back when they go for the consumer. Um, in December, they're launching the individual boxes. They're going to be putting my recipes on the back. It's a tropical pudding, which is like a creamy coconut pudding layered with mango and graham cracker crumbs. So it just opens up a whole genre of recipe that I had never touched before because the quality just wasn't there. And where would people be able to find them? Regular supermarkets like ShopRite and Pathmark, as well as every kosher supermarket. This is, and again, you should excuse the fact that I am a novice here. This is primarily used for desserts? Well, there is a whole world of gelatin involved in savory dishes, things like aspics, things like gravies, and it's not what I'm looking for. I write what I want to eat, and I don't want to eat an aspic right now. Maybe I'll be educated and, and you'll see aspic recipes for me, but right now I think gelatin, I think desserts. And I also think presentation. People love beautiful things on a table as a centerpiece. How much fun is something like this, yes. you know, which is just the color gelatins layered at different, you know, at different angles. Um, and even just for the activity part for kids, if you're going to use the prepared gelatin flavors, you can do things with this gelatin because of its strength, like using cookie cutters to cut out shapes or letters, um, making lollipops out of it. It just makes for a phenomenal centerpiece and really fun activity for kids. Are you working on a new book? I am, always. <laughs> <laughs> Kosher by Design, Teens in the Kitchen. Please God, a year from Hanukkah. And the theme, obviously, is for, is for younger people? It's for teenagers. Um, I wrote a book called Kosher by Design, Kids in the Kitchen, about seven years ago. And I feel like those kids have grown up. And kids in general are so into cooking, boys and girls, that I felt like it was just a natural. So remind me, when is the first book you wrote? When, when was it? The original Kosher by Design, I started working on in 2001. Okay. So basically, since the turn of the millennium, you've been doing this. Yeah. Susie, can you at all describe the extent to which you feel the world of kashrut has become more and more something that grabs people's attention? It absolutely is true. I find that I'm hired by groups um, of people that are not only orthodox. I'm hired by groups to come do cooking demonstrations that, that comprise of people who are not even, let's say, re reform in their, in their observancy of kashrut, but they're so excited that kosher can be represented in such an upscale way. You look around this room at Kosher Fest and you see the variety of products from all different cultures and parts of the world that are kosher. And the biggest news of all, that Tootsie Rolls are becoming kosher. It just doesn't get bigger than that. This is like cutting edge news. <laughs> I want to say it again. No one has helped the world of kashrut in our generation more than you. Thank you. You are a lovely human being, a wonderful chef, and you do tremendous books. Thank you. Susie Fishbein, and once again, tell us the product name. Colon and Kosher Gelatin. I am standing now with Gilad Musik, who has a very interesting kosher product 
So tell us about your product, Gilad. Yeah, well, uh, this is uh, kosher beef jerky. Kosher beef jerky. Holy cow, kosher beef jerky, <laughs> that is. Yeah. USDA uh, approved. Yes. Yeah, it has a shelf life of one and a half years. It's preservative free. That means no nitrates, no nitrates. It's a healthy product. We try and uh, keep our ingredients as healthy as possible. We've got some organic ingredients in there. That's wonderful. You, know? you have, by the way, a delicious accent. Where are you from? I, I'm from Australia. Okay. Yeah. This is a New York company, though. Yes, it is. Okay. Correct. How long has the company been in operation? Uh, we've been, for six months, we've been in operations, but uh, we've been working on the product and, and the design and everything for about two years. They were original, teriyaki. Sweet and spicy, and uh, and hickory. That we have a uh, we got flavors for every palate. You know, we uh, hickory flavor has absolutely no sugar as well, and um, it's you know it's uh, you know one of the best mark uh, kosher beef jerkies out there. Okay. So Gilad, where in the world do people pick this up? Well, you can pick it up in any kosher store in uh, in in New, New York. You can get it in Fairways. We got it in some Albertsons. You got it on the on the on the West Coast. You can get it. Um, in LA, in Gladmar, you know, in all the kosher kosher stores on the on the on the um, on the West Coast, go to our go to our website holycowkosher.com, and uh, you can go. We can have a look at the stores. It's, all the stores are listed there. In the site, you can also buy it off. Uh, you buy it online as well. That's wonderful. Great. Gilad Musik, Holy Cow Beef Jerky, Kosher. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Now, some of you may be wondering, what is kashrut all about? Actually, the word kasher, kosher, kasher is the Hebrew word. Kasher simply means proper. And it can be applied to anything that's done in a Jewish way. Something is either kasher or low kasher. The word low means no. So low kasher means it is not proper. But the most frequently used sense of the word kasher is the w way in which it's applied to food, and that it's called kashrut. The laws of kashrut have to do with all the laws having to do with what is permissible and proper to eat as a Jew. According to the Torah, there are certain foods which are kasher, which are permitted and proper for the Jew. In the Torah, certain animals are permitted specifically to be eaten. For example, all animals which have a cloven hoof and which chew their cud are kasher. They're clean animals and can be eaten. So, for example, the cow and the lamb and the reindeer are all permitted to a Jew. At the same time, foods like pig or horse or dog or cat, they do not have both a cloven hoof nor do they chew their cut at the same time, and therefore they are not clean, they are unclean, and Jews are not permitted to eat them. They are low kosher. And what about fish? For a fish to be kosher, clean and proper in a kosher home, to be eaten in a kosher meal, the fish must have both fins and scales. So trout and salmon and halibut, all freshwater fish, they are kosher. Whereas the shark, the catfish are low kosher, as are all shellfish. All shellfish are forbidden in a kosher home. So no lobster, no shrimp, no clams, no oyster. Nor can one eat cold-blooded animals or rodents. One may not eat eel, or snake, or rabbit, or frog. All those are low kosher. And what about fowl, birds? Well, the birds that are always eaten in a Jewish home are chicken and turkey. But all the birds of prey, the vulture, the eagle, they are low kosher. And of course, one of the most well-known principles of all when it comes to kashrut, how Jews eat, is based on a biblical verse which says that one should not seethe, boil, a kid, a baby goat, in its mother's milk. The verse appears both in the book of Exodus and in the book of Deuteronomy. One may not seethe a kid in its mother's milk. 
an attempt to explain that even though one may eat animals, may kill animals, one should always remember and have a sense of compassion that even human kindness extends to the way we prepare our foods. And there's something just cruel about the notion that one would cook the baby animal in the mother of that animal. From that biblical verse, the rabbis have created the notion that one may not eat milk products and fleshic meat products at the same meal. And there's always a distinction made between milk and meat in any kosher home. So one would never sit down with a roast beef sandwich and a glass of milk. It would make a Jew throw up. One doesn't ever have a cheese burger. It's just not something would do, something one would do in a kosher home. And there's always the idea that one is doing something holy, sanctified, when one is privileged to have food at one's table. All of this goes into the concept of kashrut, eating in a kosher, proper way in a Jewish home. I'm standing now with Heidi Biala, who is involved with a product called Oxygen, which is really an attempt to do some natural kashrut. Heidi, how long have you been in this? Uh, it's about four years. We're trying to bring the natural uh, and the, the healthy products to the kosher market. We've been very successful. We've won many Kosher Fest Awards. This year it's with the um, Mixed Berry Blast, uh, a preserve, the best preserve. And uh, we're very excited about our line. People are starting to recognize this brand for good quality, for um, you know integrity. And it's, it's, an, it's really working out very well. Do me a favor and show me some of the products. Thank you. Hold the microphone. Okay. We have a line of about uh, 12 preserves which are actually on this side. Um, the preserves are all natural, uh, made of whole, you'll have whole fruit pieces in them. Then we have sauces of about 15 different types of sauces, also all natural sauces. Some are based on fruit, some are based on honey. You'll have like 40% honey in the dressings and sauces. And they serve not only for health benefit, but also as a preservative and uh, a natural preservative. And then we have new sauces here, actually, that are based on date, or the Ceylon. And these come in three flavors, as well as a plain Ceylon, or a date honey, or date syrup, as they call it. This is excellent in cooking. Um, we have a line of olive oil, as well as uh, gourmet olives that we're just bringing out to the market. In addition to the Oxygen brand, we also carry Linz Farms, which is a small bee farm in Israel that produces extremely high quality uh, honey, organic honey, uh, different flavored honey. Their latest product, which I think is absolutely beautiful, are um, these little packets, packets of honey uh, that, are, that also come on the New Year card. You can see it actually blends, the artwork blends into the card. These packets of honey come in six different distinct flower flavors and uh, seem to serve not only for Rosh Hashanah and other purposes, but also for bicycle riders. They take them as energy packs with them when they go out cycling. Um, the kosher market today is not only for Jewish people, it is across the board, very much in demand. Uh, you have the Muslims who buy kosher, the Hindus in the Indian community who buys kosher, they're interested in parv products, they don't want animal product in what they're eating. Um, other people, I've had my hairdresser tell me they only buy kosher because they feel that it's cleaner. There's somebody checking up on things and making sure that they're getting the best they can get. So if somebody wanted oxygen products, how would they get them? You can get oxygen products at all the gourmet and specialty stores. Uh, you can buy them at Fairway, uh, the different supermarkets, as well as Amazon.com for the um, items that are not in glass. Um, they're really basically spread across in, in 
all over the place now. That's lovely. And who are you? How did you get involved in this? All right, I'm now one of the owners of the company. Uh, we got involved. We decided to open this company during the Intifada, the second. Who's we? My husband and myself. Where do you live? We live in New Jersey. And uh, during the Intifada, we wanted to do something that would help Israel. We we're very upset about what was going on. And so we opened uh, this company and um, decided we would just import products from Israel. In the meantime, we have grown into quite a bigger company. And we do buy products from Jews, Arabs, and Christians, all living in Israel. And it's become a really, uh, a very, it's just a wonderful feeling. And I think it's very productive in, in many ways besides business, as you can see. That is lovely, Heidi. Um, what kind of Jewish home do you have? What kind of Jewish home? Yeah. You're affiliated with a synagogue? We're affiliated with Chabad. Uh, we have a kosher home. We are not Orthodox, but we do have six children. And they're very much involved in what we do. They eat these products too? They eat the products. They write. They take pictures of the products. They live this, these products. Have you been to Israel? I'm Israeli. I'm a Tzabarit. I was born in Israel. Where? In uh, Tel Aviv. And my husband's from Jerusalem. Really? Yes. And uh, after we actually, I had lived abroad, so we met uh, one summer, and then I went back to serve in the army, and we got married, and we came to the United States, and we love it here. Do you still have family in Israel? Tons of family. So you get to go there every now and then? All the time. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wish you Kotuva Hatzlacha. You, you have so a wonderful much. product, and I wish you all the best Thank with you. it. Okay. Thank you for visiting us. Heidi Biala, and this is Oxygen. So I'm standing now with Udi Kadim of Yarden. Tell us about your company, Udi. Yarden Incorporated is an American company, a subsidiary of Golan Heights Winery in Israel. We represent two wineries, two of the leading wineries in Israel. One is the Golan Heights Winery, and the other is Galil Mountain. Okay, obviously the Golan Winery is in the Golan Heights, yes? Correct. And the other one is? The Galil Mountain is in the Galilee region. Okay. Strangely and enough. You are Israeli yourself? I am. Okay. Where are you from? I live in a place called, in a town called Kochav Yair, which is in the center of Israel. Okay. So tell us about the product and why are your wines so special? <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's a labor of love. But uh, the Golan Heights Winery, some of our wines uh, are here. The Golan Heights Winery um, first started producing wine in 1983. It was the first Israeli winery that uh, uh, made a conscious decision to produce quality wines. Prior to that, wines were you know, of a sacramental nature. Quality was not an issue. And uh, the decision when the winery was started was to make quality wines. And that's what we've been trying to do uh, since then. Uh, our first wine, our first Cabernet Sauvignon was produced in 1983. And we have been uh, conse consecutively uh, producing wine since. Um, Actually, at the end of 2008, the Wine Spectator magazine, which I'm assuming you are familiar with, uh, chose uh, our 2004 Cabernet Sauvignon as one of the top 100 wines of the year after tasting, I believe, 19,500 wines. So we've, you know, we've achieved something over the years. Um, and the uh, Gal uh, Galil Mountain Winery, which is uh, uh, partly owned by uh, the Golan Heights Winery as well, uh, different philosophy of winemaking, more approachable wines, younger wines, less barrel time, two very different but uh, both quality-minded wineries. Okay, and I see both red and white here. Correct. Are you giving people any tastes? We are, yes. What should I taste? Uh, what's your pleasure? Whites, reds? Let me see your red first. What do we have here? Okay. We've got the Merlot. We've got the uh, 2004 Merlot. Yes. We have got, actually, you know what we've got here? We've got the 2004 Cabernet Sauvignon. I would love to try. Something. Let me taste the Cabernet. It's a very good choice. Okay, here we go. I love go. Cabernet. Okay, let me see. And uh, what year is this? This is 2004. This is the wine I mentioned now, which made the uh, top 100 list in the Wine Spectator. Wonderful. Okay. Incidentally, as I'm about to taste this wine, you should tell our audience, what makes a wine kosher? Um, well, first of all, it's supervised uh, by Moshgichim. Uh, primarily, 
or, or essentially what makes a wine kosher is that uh, we, we do not use ingredients that are not allowed to be used in the process. That's it. That, that's all it is. It is a beautiful looking wine. L'chaim. Oh, this is marvelous. Good reaction. Ooh, <laughs> this is the best Cabernet I've ever had. 2004, huh? 2004. This is marvelous. So, where does somebody get this wine? Almost everywhere. We distribute in 30 states across the country. Um, look up your local liquor store, or uh, you're always welcome to call your Arden Incorporated offices in New York, and we'll point you in the right direction. Okay. And can this be uh, found online as well? It can. Okay. Well, Udi, this is a marvelous line. Thank I, you so much. I, and not only that, it's a kick for us to be able to feature something that's made in Israel. And I assume, I shouldn't say, shouldn't assume. If there are people who are watching who then make a trip to Israel, do you give tours of your winery? We do. We do. We have a visitor center, and we are very happy to welcome them. Kol to you. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you so Uri. Uri. And there you have Yarden Incorporated, a marvelous, marvelous line of both white and red wines. I'm talking to Gigi Bressler, who's with the Blue and White Company, and they bring products in from Israel. Gigi, tell me some of the products you bring. Okay, we have a lot of vegetarian products under the brand called Ta'amti, and uh, they're being presented here at the show. Uh, you wouldn't know that they are a vegetarian product. We have something like called, what? Like like Frank's in a jacket, mm -hmm. and you would see, look at it and say, "This is Frank's in a jacket." I thought this was a non-meat product, and it is. It's a non-meat. Everyone who's tasting it today goes, "Really?" <laughs> And, of course, we have our Saba products. They're all hummus-based, some eggplant-based, and all different flavors. And there's not been one person who has stopped by here today, and this is true, one person who says, Sabra, that's the only thing I have in my house. That's the only thing I buy. And it's true. It's why we're one of the best products, hummus, on the market. And everybody, you know, so many of the stores carry it, and it literally flies off the shelf. We have something now called Snack and Go, which is a lunch product. and has hummus and crackers. Grab and go, and you have lunch all ready for you in the car. That's wonderful. Yeah, so it's really a very how, how did you create Blue and White? Well, I really didn't create it. It's been created by the owners, and of course, he's very Israel-minded. Uh, his name is Yehuda Pearl, and he runs, he's actually the rabbi of my synagogue, and I, but that's not, not how I got the job. Where is the synagogue? West Hempstead, New York, congregation on Shalom. And uh, he flies to Israel probably every six weeks, and he just told me recently, he goes to bed, wakes up 2 o'clock in the morning because he's doing business on the phone with Israel. So he's very big supporter of Israel and feels if, when he supports Israel, everyone does well. Well, it's lovely to see so many Israel-based products here at Kosher Fest 2009. And it's something that I really wanted American Jewry and all the American audience who's watching Shalom TV to understand that there are many, many kosher products now available from the state of Israel. Well, there's, someone told me, and I don't know this for a fact, but right now on the kosher market, between 80 and 100,000 kosher products. The kosher consumer base has spread so far. I'm an only child. I have three, and I have nine grandchildren, all eating kosher products. So it's does, everyone should feel good about that because years ago, maybe you said, oh, I don't have to keep yes, kosher anymore. Yes. Now kosher is in. Just look at the wines, the cheeses. I, when I was growing up in the, in the 40s, we never had anything like right. that. Now I told you how old I am. But anyways, uh, it's a really very warm feeling to see people, both Jewish and not Jewish, caterers and everything to come and look at the product and buy it for their institutions. You see a lot of nursing homes, schools, camps, who really are all, you know, want the kosher products, whether it's small sizes, big sizes, further stores, further caterers. A lot of caterers came in today. Yeah. And that's great. We love it. Iggy Brestler, I'm so proud to meet you, and I hope you do continue to do this wonderful work called Tuva Hatzlacha, bringing us many of the kosher products from Israel. Thank you very much. Blue and white, Iggy Brestler. So I'm speaking now with Roy Wolf, who is sixth generation, sixth generation. a sixth generation matzah maker. His company is Aviv. His father is here too, and what a kick to be able I'm to sorry. see father my, my and son. Grand, my grandmother couldn't make it. I'm really, I really apologize. No, she's the she really? is the CEO of the company. No kidding. She's 87, but Mazel coming Mazel. all the way to America was a bit too much. That, for her. What's her name? Sarah Wolf. Sarah Wolf. Yeah. Um, 
she started the company? No, her, <laughs> her, her grandfather actually started the company. Yeah. Where in Israel are you based? It, we are now in Bnei Brak, which yes, is a suburb sure. of Tel Aviv. Well, we've been in Israel since 1887. The first factory was in Nevet Sedek, that's the, fir the first neighborhood of Tel Aviv. And today, since 1946, we're in Bnei Brak. That's wonderful. So, Roy, talk to us about your product. Okay, besides the uh, matzahs that everybody knows we're making, we've been, ma we've been making for many years. We have all kinds of flavored matzahs, egg matzahs, egg and onion, egg and garlic, honey matzahs. Besides that, we have a, a large... Do you make matzot also for Pesach? Of course, mainly for Pesach, yes, of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> mainly for Pesach. Pesach is also known as Chaga Aviv in Hebrew. That's, so, that's where what our brand is coming from. And besides Passover items, we're also making sugar-free uh, cookies. Now this is the Aviva line, yeah. a part of the Aviv company. That's correct. Okay, talk to us about Aviva. Well, Aviva is our brand for health foods and for well-being foods. These cookies are sugar-free and light, only 15 calories per cookie, and only 8% fat per 100 gram, uh, which is very low compared to other uh, cookies in the market. To what extent has Aviva caught on in Israel itself? You know, in America, everybody is very health conscious and fat conscious and sugar conscious. It's different in Israel. To what extent has Aviva caught on in Israel? Well, our first target market are diabetic people, and these are buying it a lot, but also Weight Watchers, which are the secondary market. It's also in Israel becoming more and more health conscious. We actually are very much like America in uh, customer preferences. Okay. now. You li you have your family? Uh, yeah, my family. We're all in Israel. We're in Israel. And literally, where is your own home? My home is Tel Aviv. In Tel Aviv. Okay. And uh, you grew up in Israel as a Sabra? Yeah, I, I grew up as a Sabra. Okay. How has life been there lately for you? Well, I love this country, I must say. And, uh, well, for us, it's uh, it's always been, uh, I always feel good and safe in, the, in, in Israel. I, the Tel Aviv is a great city. You should all come and pay us a visit. And... Uh, it's a great place to live in. That's lovely. That, I'm very happy there. That is lovely. My last question is, yeah. for Americans watching all over the United States right now, yeah. if they want Aviv Matzah yes. or if they want some of the Aviva products, yeah. how do we get them? Well, you can find them at the supermarkets all over the country. The Aviva cookies are brand new. This is the first time we show, we show them in America. We hope that after this show you'll be able to find them in supermarkets as well. But Aviv Matzah, you can find retailers such as ShopRite, AMP, Wallbaum, in some areas and also in Costco. You can, see that you can find them all the shelves all over the country, before Passover, of course. And what about online? Can we order online as well? Yeah, in several uh, re uh, shops like uh, Zaybars, if you know, they have a website. You can order them, uh, them online and they do ship all over the country. Roy, it's been a pleasure meeting you. I Thank wish you called two v'hatzlacha. Thank you very you, much. You've been doing this without my, without my support for many, many generations. You should do it for generations and yet to come. And one day you'll be here and your son will be here and their grandfather will be here and you'll still be selling Aviva and Aviv right, Matzo. Sure. We'll Thank you very, very much. I am standing with a very special lady, Linda Zelda Nyman. Zelda, by the way, is your middle name. It is, okay. yes. And you have developed an entire line, a, a, a lot of baked goods, with your middle name. I have. I have. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay. So, Linda, tell us about your product. Our product is all handmade in our location in Skokie, Illinois. Skokie, Illinois. Skokie, Illinois, yes. And um, near Chicago, Illinois. We make everything really with the finest ingredients. We make everything on site. And um, we have now a Passover line. Um, our Passover chiffon cake won best in the Passover competition and the new product competition. And we have a full everyday line as well. That's wonderful. By the way, is the uh, chiffon here? It is. It is. It's right in front on the front table. And Show it to us here. Which one is it? It is actually this cake right here. It is this cake right here, our orange chiffon cake. It won first prize. And it won first prize. It's really excellent. We hope that um, you'll be able to try it today. Um, and actually, everyone who's come by has sampled <laughs> it. They've enjoyed it. How did you get into this, Linda? Um, I actually started baking and cooking and, um, on a volunteer basis when my second son was born. I stopped working. I was a computer programmer by trade. Um, for 20 years I did that as I stayed at home and raised my boys and when it came time to go back to work 
Um, this was truly my love, and actually this is what I enjoy doing most today. What Jewish community are you involved with in Skokie? Um, well, the store is in Skokie, and actually we're involved with several communities. We work closely with Chabad, with all the um, neighborhood synagogues. Um, we work with, actually, I live in Lincolnwood, so we work with Chicago and, you know, Chicago um, residents, neighborhoods, caterers, and um, we're close enough to the suburbs and the city that we get to work with everyone. How would you describe the character of your own Jewish home? Um, I grew up in an Orthodox home. Um, I married my husband um, when I was 20 years old, so, and um, he also grew up in an Orthodox home. And we truly um, enjoy bringing up our family. We feel like it um, creates a really close-knit family just living within the Jewish tradition. That is so lovely. These are your products over here as well. And before we leave you, Linda, describe these products to, uh, of a Zelda Sweet Shop. Um, these are our... Um, bakery items as we call them. They are fresh baked items. Our pecan pie um, won best dessert um, last year in last year's um, new product competition. Um, we're very proud of it. It's really excellent. But these are all um, items that either started out in my home in Lincolnwood, Illinois and came to our store in Skokie or that we've developed over the years. We have our Bopka, which is actually a new product for this year. Um, it is actually um, in the Whole Foods markets today. Um, and we're very proud of that. We're um, looking forward to going into the more healthy, sweet food direction. And um, actually on this table, um, surrounding the baked goods are some of our newer products as well. Our um, brownie bites, which is our um, original brownie that we've been making for years covered in chocolate. What could be better? <laughs> And um, our Mandel Bites, also one of our original products, um, we started out with a Mandel bread or a biscotti. We made it little and small, petite, and then we covered in chocolate too. So um, all good products. Linda, how are you able to produce so much? You know, again, there are people watching right now. Here you are, a mommy who, who has not only turned baker, but has turned entrepreneur. This doesn't happen overnight, Linda. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. It happens with um, a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and as my um, actually direct, director of operations would say, a lot of chutzpah. <laughs> and um, we've been lucky enough that we've um, gotten to this point today where you know our product is thought of as, of, of a, of, as a gourmet product and um, well accepted within the um, kosher and regular community. So um, I guess it's a, a lot of hard work and a little bit of luck. Well, good for you. Last question. People see these products and want Zelda's baked goods from Zelda's Sweet Shop. How do people bring this into their own home? Okay, well, if you live in Chicago area, it's easy. We're actually in the uh, Jewel Osco stores. We have our own retail location. In um, the New York communities, um, we work with um, a distributor, uh, several distributors who um, have um, things in several local stores, and we hope after the show, we're in many more of the East and West Coast supermarkets. I hope so, too, and I hope the fact that you're on Shalom TV helps. Linda Zelda Neiman Call to all the best to you. Thank you so much. I'm standing now with Jake Lieberman, and we're at, I don't know about what, is this Bagel, is everything here Bagel Bites? Bagel Bites USA. We're importers from Israel of Angel Bakery exclusive and Hogalan Turkey and other fine foods throughout the state of Israel. Okay. But we're in front of desserts here. Are you only desserts? No. Tell us. We're not only desserts. We have from here different assortment of pita breads that we bring in. We have assortment of 30 different types of breakfast from potato to, to spinach to cheese to pizza breakfast, a whole variety on this end. On the other end over there, we have products for Passover. We have hamburger rolls for Passover. We have hot dog rolls. For How Passover. can you have a hamburger roll for Passover? It's, it's all And it's all gluten-free. And here, right here, it's stepping okay. out of the oven. Okay, come here. Pizza, Okay. Okay. Pizza this this to me is an anachronism. We have pizza 
for Passover? Yes, for Passover, yes. yes pizza sir. for Pesach. We send the base. How is that possible? How is that, Jake, Jake, how is that possible? It's made from potato starch. And potato starch is acceptable, and, and, and it's very tasty. You eat it, you will not believe it. There's nothing like it. The cost like no gluten, gluten-free. So it's no, no inside the flour. Cut a small piece, a small piece. I want my cameraman to try it. My cameraman is an expert. Sloan, you are an expert on pizza, yes. <laughs> okay, and what else, what else do we have here? What tell, show me here. We have here chocolate ragalach. This is, all, this is all kosher le pesa? This is Jake. Co oh, kosher le pesa? Yeah, 100%. Take a look at this beautiful rug. Okay? You will not believe it's Passover that we were slaves in Egypt at all. We come here and we, we get spoiled here in America. Look, let's get this for your cameraman here. Okay, okay. Let, let, let me see if... Okay, if can... okay, Igor, get, get a picture of this, Igor. Okay, Sloan. Get a picture of this, Igor. Passover, right? He says it's good pizza. He wants to give you another one, yeah. <laughs> nah, no, no, Sloan eats the pizza for me. Wait, did, did you take a look at the hamburger okay. rolls here? This, again, an anachronism, hamburger rolls for Passover. I don't know, you know, but in all seriousness, doesn't it do something to undercut the mood yes, of the holiday? Yes, I remember all I had was tuna fish on Passover <laughs> and boiled potatoes. And we're, maybe some we're supposed to eat matzah on Passover. I know, where's okay. the matzah? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Anyway, show what, what do we have here? You hold the mic. We, we, we have we have over here hamburger rolls for Passover, which are delicious. We have amazing hot dog buns for Passover, and remember, this is all gluten free. And we have here bagels. We have here cocktail rolls, and then we have it open up the whole assortment of cakes, some coconut orange cake, from chocolate uh, cake. And different flavored uh, breads. We have a walnut bread, we have an Italian bread, we have an onion bread, and we have an assortment of rugelach and cookies. And then over here, we really get to we have absolutely amazing cakes. And we want to give you cameraman to uh, take excuse some. Me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Oh. Okay, he'll take. He's he's the master of the pizza. I'm the master of the cake. Okay. Yo, same in cloud. Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan. That is outstanding. You see the variety here? All parv. All parv. Amazing variety here. But these are not kosher Pesach. All kosher Pesach. No, Everything. impossible. Everything here from the pie to the lemon meringue. Great variety here. In all seriousness, Jake, at least the line is gorgeous. Where would American Jews who have a kosher home, want to celebrate Pesach, would love these products, how do we get them? No problem. It's angel dot usa at windowslive dot com. So we can you order them on online. Side and you uh, now you see the product and you call and you call us up. If you want, you can reach us at seven one eight four three nine eight nine 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 nine. That's one too in many Brooklyn. nines, but we understand. Too many nines, but it's, it's okay. but that's the number in Brooklyn, <laughs> and we service the whole United States. Uh, we even send stuff to Grenada, in fact, too. Where are you from, Jake? I'm from Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> <laughs> you grew up in a kosher home. I grew up in a kosher home. Really? But, but I tell you, I didn't have this variety. <laughs> we didn't have bagels on Passover. I didn't have lemon meringue pie. <laughs> we we we're lucky even if we had a piece of chocolate. All right, let's but, go. You know, with his ingenuity now that Zeb makes, he has, uh, it's called English Cake, and that's the name of the chain of his stores in Israel. He makes these amazing cakes for Passover, and he brings us the here in the United States to sell them to the American consumer. English Cakes is the name of your product? So yes, that's the name of the Yerushalayim in Jerusalem. Mitsuyan, you'll save me a clown. Okay, okay we're, we're going to go on the other side now to see the deli part. So... Jake, just you know, kind of give me a tour here. What do we got? Okay, hold the mic. I, 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 I give you a little bit of a tour of a lot of the products that we import here. Angel Barakas from Jerusalem. Angel Barakas, that famous uh, bakery in Jerusalem. You can't beat it. Unbelievable. And we also have these amazing pita bread that we now put in a retail package for home. We can microwave it, and they are so soft in texture you cannot believe it. Amazing line. We also have a whole line from Tapugan 
which is here in the case. These are all vegetarian chicken cutlets. Some come with corn, some are home style, some are plain, all vegetarian. It's very healthy and, and it's absolutely delicious product. We also import assortment of baklava from Israel. Absolutely amazing if you like the taste. And of course from Israel, that famous crembo, you know, that everyone just, like the, like the mallow cup, that everyone just loves to eat. And I, and I know how much he loves dessert over here. This is nothing like it. This, this, oh, we bring this up. Oh my goodness. It is so unbelievable. It's absolutely delicious. We're giving people here a whole variety of the assortment of deli that we import from Israel. Now, our importer here is Hod Golan. If you could get a good look at the, at the case here of the assortment, we have mini cabanossi, which is just unbelievable. A turkey delight, which is a blend of dark and light turkey. We even have a Mexican cabanossi, which is a little spicier. For those that like a little spice in the life, we have over eight different flavors here of sliced turkey. Even turkey salami, it, it's just amazing. You can't believe that it's turkey, how healthy it is, 98% fat free. And we also have these many chunks of the turkey you know if you're doing a little party at home and you just want to chop up a little bit and put it on a cutting board a little mustard some pickles so you have your own like miniature turkey here which comes in like eight different flavors also we have dark turkey pastrami we got mexican which is a little bit spicier we got smoked we got regular and then of course how could you forget we have turkey hot dogs amazing hot dogs you don't have to worry about anything but let's move oh, along oh, a little bit. But wait, this is all bagel bites? This is all bagel bites. Okay, what do we got here bagel. now, Jake? We have the whole turkey breast in its whole form and the different flavors. We've got the turkey pastrami. We have here the turkey salami, which is unbelievable. This here is the natural breast of the turkey itself. The natural breast, not formed. It's naturally hung to dry. Uh, we have excellent coastal supervision on it. We even got for Lubavitch supervision. We have OU on it, Rabbi Babad. Excellent turkey imported from Israel. Are any of these yeah. products in any supermarkets in America? Yeah, we have, yeah. Uh, we have some of the supermarkets. So ShopRite and the Badmark and Fairway. Fairway. Public. Publix. Very, very good, very yeah. good. So right. it's, not only it's not only online. No. One no. can go into a major that's supermarket that's right. and find your line. That's, that's right. right. Okay. And all the kosher stores. And, and, sure. and, can you introduce me, sir? All the best. Thank all you the success. Much. Hatzlacha. Thank okay. You. This is Jay. Jake. Jake, it's been wonderful meeting you. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> and Bagel Bits is quite a line, and we hope that you'll either look, at it, uh, look for the products online or in a major supermarket near you. Thank you very all much. All the best to Thank you. you. I appreciate Thank it very, you. very much. And the cakes were out of this world. <laughs> I am standing with... Jay Spitzer, who is part of COR, and you know, Jay, many people in America see COR and kosher products, have no idea what it means. Tell everybody what it means. It's Kosher's Council of Canada, the largest certifier in Canada. We recently changed our logo to put the word kosher on it, making it more recognizable. People shouldn't think it's not a registered trademark, it's not a patent. It's a one of the more reliable kosher certifications in North America recognized internationally. So really um, expanding and growing, adding companies every week. So that's, that's what we're doing. Plus we are the local certifiers in Toronto, restaurants, bakeries, butchers. Come to Toronto, you'll be eating at COR establishments. So. Very lovely. Are there products in America which American Jews would run into with a COR label? Our, our manufacturers are recognizing that more and more they have to go to the states. Give and Go, which is one of the products there in the, in the center of the of the of the, uh, of the banner, the, the, it's brownies. They're extremely successful in the states, and they're going exclusively with the COR. More and more companies finding they don't need to go with the OU, with Circle K, Chav K, they can go with the COR locally. They're Canadian companies. They want to export to the United States. The COR is all they need. Now, I see Kellogg's there. Is, are, are you on Kellogg's? So Kellogg's is manufactured in Canada. Kellogg's is under COR. Kellogg's has manufacturers all over the United States, Canada, Europe, Israel, and uh, in Canada they're under COR for sure. I see Pepsi there. Will I see a Pepsi bottle with COR? Absolutely. Come to Toronto, buy Pepsi anywhere and everywhere and be able to COR. And Pepsi, Sprite, all the Pepsi products. The, sl the Slurpees under Pepsi, they're all COR as well. 
going to 7-Eleven, you buy a Pepsi product on their Slurpee, you get a COR Slurpee. So it's important to know COR. All of us are familiar with the OU label, with the K, but you will be seeing COR more and more. Jay, thanks for the time Our and all pleasure. the best. Thank you. Thank you. Jay Spitzer. So I now have the pleasure of standing with the man who is perhaps most responsible for Kosher Fest and Jewish Expo, Menachem Lubinsky. What a great job this year. Well, thank um, you very much. You know, one worried that the economy might hurt Kosher Fest. As I look around, it, it looks to be teeming. Um, how would you rate this year? Well, I think it's probably the best year in the 22-year history of the show. And the reasons for it are uh, kind of like because it's, it's kind of despite the economy. Yes. I mean, we, we got reports on this past uh, high holidays that it was the gourmet and the more expensive items that sold better than the general items. Even people who are very price conscious throughout the year uh, spend extra money dur during the holidays. So, and, and if you look around the show, it's sort of like looking back 22 years, it's almost that anything that can become kosher today becomes kosher. It's the traditional items are still here, but they're more in the background. They're not the way they used to be out front in terms of what kosher represented. Menachem, give me a sense of where you think at the moment the American Jewish community is in general. You know, there are some people who are concerned that the newer generation, the younger generation, while there is a core of interest in some broad sense, Fewer and fewer Jews are connected to Israel. Jew fewer and fewer Jews are connected to the Jewish tradition. Fewer and fewer Jews seem to be connected to synagogue life. And I know how much all this means to you. So, Menachem Lubinsky, what's your sense of where American Jewry is today? Well, my sense is that there are more bright uh, spots on the horizon than there have been before. Uh, there are Jews that are connecting to Judaism in ways that they haven't before. There are Jews that are participating in programs that they never participated before. So while the numbers don't look good, and we're still faced with an, with an intermarriage of one out of two, and assimilation is a growing threat, but at the same token, there are now pockets of, of resurgence. And, and it kind of the Jewish community has always been that way. It's been those pockets that have, that have, that have, have brought back Jewish life. I mean, if you look at, at even America before, before World War II, it was the refugees came in and, and again, injected new life into, into, into Jew, in the Jewish community in America. I see the same thing happening in the, in the U.S. as well. Uh, I just, I just parenthetically, I just spent, spent a couple of days in Odessa, uh, a place where you would never think that a synagogue, an Orthodox synagogue, would fill 400 seats on a Shabbat. Wow. And this is coming from the, sort of the bottom third of society because everyone else has left. And there's a tremendous resurgence of Jewish life. What brought you to Odessa? Well, I was actually there for a Shabbaton with 200 Jewish students in Odessa uh, in an organization that I represent. Named? The Eternal Jewish Family. And I, I could not believe what I found there. there was, it was kind of like my wildest dream. I could not expect to walk to Odessa to see kids with yarmulkes, to see a, a, a school system with 900 children. And this is Odessa. So if, if it's possible in Odessa, It'll happen here too. Now, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that that there'll be a particular brand of Judaism that makes the resurgence. But whatever that brand happens to be, there will be uh, there will be some resurgence. And I notice it more than anything else when it comes to food, because you see those Jews when you see those Jews before Passover. You see them going up and down the kosher aisles. They are buying the products that Grandma used to buy, the, and, the, and there are many more people buying kosher cookbooks today and are interested. So. And maybe, maybe it's, the, it's technology that's bringing people closer because it's so easy for people now just to access information. And, and it, uh, shows like yours. And it's very difficult to know that you have Jewish roots and when the thing is in your face, not to pick up something of, the, of it. By the way, Menachem, who the heck are you? How did you become Menachem Lubinsky? Who are your parents? My parents uh, were Holocaust survivors. It's interesting that you ask that because today happens to be the art site, the anniversary of my mother's death, who was uh, uh, born and raised in Lodz, Poland. And my father was in a small town outside of Warsaw. But my father had a, an amazing story because after the war, he was the chief rabbi in Hanover, 
which was at that time run by the British. And he had the formidable challenge of, of bringing back kosher meat, of dealing with the agunot, with women who, who didn't know where their husbands were, thanks to the, uh, you could say thanks, to the meticulous records that the Germans kept. He was able to validate 37,000 women to remarry. So you might say it's a little bit of my blood. I mean, that was kind of what he did, and this was after he went through all the concentration camps, had suffered the worst punishment possible by the Nazis, and yet he came back. And as uh, Shimon Grelius, who was a um, prisoner of conscience in Russia, sat for five years, I was with him in Odessa, and he said, what I enjoy doing is walking out on the main street of Odessa with my, with my gray beard and my black hat and to say, I'm back. And not only am I back, but my people are back as well. This is Menachem Lubinsky, again, responsible for Kosher Fest and Jewish Expo. Are we having Jewish Expo this year? No, not this year, but we're planning one. Okay. Anyway, he has done as much as anyone to keep a sense of Yiddishkeit and Jewish life alive and well. And I can't thank you. And of course, Tuva Haslacha, Yashikor.